Hello, folks. It's Weekender time once again, and we're going to be taking you through all the things that are interesting us throughout Kickstarters, 3D printing, and the news in tabletop gaming. On top of all of that, we're also giving one lucky subscriber a chance to win the new Black Templar Army set from store.ontabletop.com. To be given the chance to win, you need to comment below uh, if you can hit that like button and share us around social media as well to let other people know that would be terrific. Otherwise, sit back and relax because your weekend starts now. Hello everybody, we're back again for another Friday night to take you into the weekend with all the newest and most interesting things across the tabletop gaming industry. Mm -hmm. This week I'm joined by Justin, Free, and the Agent Coulson to my Nick Fury, Ben. Welcome back, Ben. <laughs> Hope you had a good holiday. Yes, it was great. Uh, I had some time away in a facility that I don't really remember very well, but yes, that was uh, right. That was That's yeah. good. I okay. call that I call that the club. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was it's been very Wait. it's a pub, you'll recognise it. I remember getting stabbed and then I you know, I woke up and that was it. So yep. Uh, yep. You know. <laughs> Sounds like you had an event for a week then. Yeah. What can I say? <laughs> Tahiti's a magical place. Yep, exactly. <laughs> But well, it's nice to have you back. We missed you very much. You. There was yes. loads of dwarves last week, and we were just kind of, it was a bit I silent. When the There's been so in. much dwarf news coming around recently that I feel like I've missed out. But yes. it's, it's almost like I deliberately picked the dwarf stuff while you weren't here. God <laughs> damn you! Not back, and we would have just had the dwarf. Yeah, yes. well, you know, yeah. can't have everything. No. Plus, before we kick into this week's show, uh, we have some exciting upcoming news, Ben. Yes, we do. So, uh, available for you to go and check out right now is our Global Gunslinger League sign-up page. Um, oh. So, at the beginning of November, um, we're going to be kicking this off uh, alongside the folks from War Cradle Studios, uh, where you'll be able to dive in and play around with the new two-player starter set, which you can see shown off there. Um, and we have talked about in in articles and videos over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and then follow us on a little bit of a hobby journey as well. So uh, we're going to be running this over six weeks. And during that time, uh, we're going to be showing you sort of like adding new miniatures to your force, building up a filled posse, um, the tactical reasonings why you'd want to do such a thing. And we're also going to have things like painting tutorials and all sorts of bits and pieces in there as well. Um, so this is going to be a fantastic opportunity for you to dive into Wild West Texas. If you've never even, you know, given it a thought before, uh, we're going to lead you by the hand through this dark and twisted world <laughs> uh, and introduce you to all the goodness that awaits you there. If you are a veteran of Wild West Exodus, this is also a really good opportunity uh, because obviously the new starter set, uh, Showdown and Retribution, gives you those two fantastic um, factions to play as the Union and the Enlightened there. Uh, and you'll get everything else you need to play and all the updated rules and everything like that as well. So this is good for newcomers and veterans alike. And hopefully you'll learn something along the way with us. Um, and we have lots of interesting plans in the works for this. So make sure to check out uh, the sign-up page. All you've got to do is uh, drop your um, your email in there and you'll be notified when everything launches. You're also going to get some bits and pieces in your in your inbox mm. in the near future as well. Um, but yeah, as Jerry was showing off there too, um, there's also a sort of interview that we did with War Cradle uh, where we talked about the new two-player start set and what you get inside it. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested in all the goodies that await you, uh, they are not far away. No. Right. If if you've never seen Wild West Exodus, that interview that Justin did with Chris uh, gives a fairly good idea of what you're looking at. And if you've seen what we did uh, last year for the Path of Conquest, yep. you'll have a, yes. a rough idea of this. This takes it a bit further in. It's sort of aimed at completely uh, new beginners, um, not just people who have not played the game before, yeah. uh, but starting from uh, bare bones, essentially, you know, mm -hmm. how, how to build your miniatures and work them all the way up. So uh -huh. should be a ton of content but, coming over the next couple of weeks slash months for that. Yeah. And, if you're wanting to bring a friend who's not a gamer in, yeah. this is the way to go. 
Yeah. Oh, very much so. Yes, a right. really good way to get people get people started with things. Definitely. Mm. And there's even even a couple of big prizes as well oh, for yes, people who right. stick along with us. So, mm. if you are interested, uh, it's worth jumping on board that and seeing where it goes. And myself and Jerry have been painting, painting. Oh, I'm going to pictures of them just yet. Just <laughs> teasing. Teasers, 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 teasers. Just absolutely mm. shocking, huh? <laughs> People will be screen grabbing that. <laughs> oh, no. Spoilers, Just. Anybody, good luck. <laughs> but it's time for us to take a look at the most important part of the show. It's our Indie of the Week. And this week, it is Heresy Lab. Ooh. So, um, interesting little company that you've plucked out for us, Ben, because they do a range of sort of sci fi and fantasy. Um, miniatures that could be used very easily for proxy miniatures for Warhammer and Warhammer 40,000. But these days with so many um, figure agnostic games, you could really go to town with these anywhere you want, depending on the game you're playing. Yeah. yeah. So we will Ooh. preface this by saying the digital bit isn't currently active. But we do know from their last Kickstarter that they have done STL, so that's probably going to be a work in progress. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if people wonder why we're skipping that, it's because there's nothing in there. <laughs> that's why. Um, just to let you know. That or you have not, to wait till the uh, 3D yeah. printing section before. Yeah, we're, we're not doing it deliberately <laughs> because I don't care about 3D printing. <laughs> uh, but uh, as you can see, right. they do hosts of things from single figures yeah. to uh, bits to upgrade. I mean... Lord Helmet there. Lord Helmet. Why would you not want a Darth Vader style <laughs> helmet for your space exactly. marines? Yes. Or Chaos Space Marines, for example. How many um, do you get in the pack, I wonder? Uh five in a five in a row. Nice. Boom. So if all of a sudden you want your I'm not sure who they would best fit as. I Black obviously Templar, maybe. Well, I was I, I was going Chaos side. I was thinking right off the bat. You can do sense. some cool things on the chaos side of things. Yeah, yeah. 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 go I Phil Sith. Would, would he be good as core? <laughs> Can't go Black Templar with that. He's all about the rage and the murdering everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Just Black clearly core. Black Empires. No, it's all core all the time. Um. <laughs> but um, before we get distracted completely, I want to oh. start off with our sci-fi side. Hmm. Um, so broken down, as you can see, into a variety of things that will be not unfamiliar for fans of uh, 40K. So mm -hmm. there are bits and pieces that will fit in for your Inquisitors, Assassins, um, nice. Redemptionists, Terminopaters, the whole nine yards, often in a weird or wacky way. They do quite a lot of um, female figures, which is nice. I particularly like this. I think I think we unboxed her many, many months ago. There's yeah. an unboxing video. Um, of a female commissar. Let me mm -hmm. see if I can ambiguate. Ambiguate. Um, successful. <laughs> but you, you get really nice things where obviously they have a distinctly sci fi slash 40K feel, but without leaning so heavily on it that they don't have their own unique appearance. Uh, mm -hmm. I particularly like the drum mag bolters, essentially. That is really cool. Uh, yeah. And the fact that she's carrying a bit of a punch on her. Um, being a commissar or lord commissar is obviously agrees with her. Gets it's all. all yeah. Yeah. I want to know how she's not falling off those skulls. That's what I want to know. I, I think she's either Stop stepping looking. up or just landing because I think she had a little jetpack. Ah, uh, yeah. So. Oh, that's nice. It's gorgeous <laughs> in the back. Mm. Yeah. And they tend to do this with a lot of the figures where they have a very. Um, th there are some uniquely sculpted or dynamic poses other ones are quite stoic yep. uh, and they're also i would like to say some of the female figures are very oh wow I, I don't want to say slight but they're correctly proportioned which means when you put them beside a power armored male figure they don't look like they've just got a female head stuck on top yeah right. that's great um i'll have a, a quick look at a few of these i can see they're in dollars are oh, they no, uh u.s based errors. no no they're um Based in, oh, I want to say they're based in the EU, but they use yes, dollars as default. So. No. Um, but they, they've been they've been doing a lot of this stuff over Kickstarter, as you were mentioning, for quite a few years now. Mm. Doing some bits and pieces, which is oh no, what? 
Okay. Is it because they're sold out? It's probably because they're sold out. Yeah. We'll just have to scroll past them like this, you see. So. <laughs> oh, he's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. The assassins are some of my favourite models. Celestial Knight, I remember, oh, was one nice. that a lot of people really would yeah. like drawn to. But I think the thing the, the thing that's really nice about this is, especially since Games Workshop have started to look a little bit more towards kind of like skirmishy stuff again. Mm-hmm. So you've got things like Kill Team uh, and all that, and Combat Patrol style stuff as well. I think bringing miniatures like these into your forces as alternatives, I think would be a really good way to go. Uh, especially with something like the assassins and stuff, because imagine you made a little kind of like assassin cadre if you're Imperial Force or something. Oh yeah, nice. um, the, I, I don't um, know if they still have it. Um, the last time they had assassins out that I paid attention to them, there was a scenario where you would put four assassins up against an entire army, <laughs> but they all had their own specific objectives. So yeah, you, yeah. you know, it, you didn't have to worry about taking the other opponent's army off. You just had to make sure that you completed your assassin's yeah. objectives um mm-hmm. while at the same time your opponent was desperately trying to keep their commander covered from a vindicator <laughs> didn't his head. but it, scenarios like that i really like because they they change up how the game plays even if you're not yeah. going to be using it in a skirmish style um using some of these as like you say alternates for uh uh hujum thingy mm. i can see nice. what you mean about the uh body proportions of male versus female Mm. It's not over the top female, but you can tell it's female by the shapes, especially when yeah. you're next to a man. Mm. It's really, yeah. Uh, well, nice. for, for the diversity that they have, you could make an absolutely banging Stargrave crew with some of this stuff. You really yeah. could as well, very much. Yeah, so, you especially could. Especially the dogs. Mm. Yeah, but you could, you could fill out pretty much any slot you can imagine in that game with the different stuff they have in here. Mm-hmm. The, ni- the nice thing about this as well, as you can see, is there's like 200 odd entries for this. And while there are obviously a few that are kind of sold out, obviously, uh, a lot of their range still exists here in, 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 uh, for you to go and pick up and, and play around with. And they tend to bring a lot of this stuff back, either kind of like reinvented in the future through Kickstarters or, yeah. you know, like sort of changing things proportionally and that kind of thing, or just in general, just revamping the line through Kickstarter so you can get access to them through there, either in resin or digital, which is cool. So, mm-hmm. so it's very I mean, nice. I've just seen that these are 55 mil. These ones that you're looking yeah, at. I think Thanks to those, those big these wings. <laughs> well, these ones are their prime market equivalents. Oh, right. Yes, yeah. of course. So, yes. yeah. hence, so each big one will have like a catalogue on one of them. Wow. Mm. Oh, yeah, of course. You've got Lord of the Dragons. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I really like that as an alternative. That's pretty that cool. That is nice as an alternative. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Very nice. Sorry. Very different. Very nice. Sorry. Or they seem to be going great guns as far as the uh, Imperial side go. Mm. Yay. Oh, that's nice. What man underdog. Yeah. <laughs> I've always liked the Celestial what? Knight. I think the Celestial Knight's really, really cool. That's mm. awesome. Yeah, so that kind of feels like your Gulliman equivalent. Yes. Yeah. Rowboat girly man. <laughs> <laughs> That's his affectionate name. He loves that, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure he wouldn't nice. smite me for heresy. Yeah. No. <laughs> nice detail. He would, he would probably laugh and then tell you to, to go away. True. Yeah. I like that they've worked in the detail onto the cloak there, so you don't have to freehand it. That's yes. nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. An, very angelic. Lots of rings within rings and too many wings. Proper <laughs> biblical angel. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think there's painters out there who, yeah, they they'd be okay with that, but some of them love doing the freehand stuff. Yeah, oh, do. yeah. it's like, a res, resin coat. Well, they can always well, remove well. it. Just taking a dog out for a space walk. Yes, that is female yeah. Robocop. Somewhere a crime <laughs> is being committed. Well, that's cute. <laughs> I like the spike collar. Yeah, I do. To protect the dog from other bigger things biting its neck. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. Mm. Not. Just had to have some bling on there as well because there's like a goldy looking chain on there too. <laughs> goldy looking chain. God, that's a callback. Christ. All right. <laughs> I like that mecha horse as well. That's... Although I, it looks like a bionic horse actually. Now I'm looking at it closer. My God, I've just seen the little cherub on the shoulder. Yeah. I think, oh, I think so it is cute. a cyborg horse yeah. because you can see in some places where the skin is coming yes. away or pustulizing. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. don't think it's particularly safe from whatever it's been ridden about in. Not a lovely horse. Not right. a lovely horse running, running through, through a field. field. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You talk to me about old callbacks. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
It's not an old callback. That's as relevant today as when it was entered into the Euro. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look down oh, here and see if word. there's anything else I can. There's the elven, we go on to elven the descendants that seems pretty cool. Oh, they're exodites. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, then watch them all be out of stock now. That's the issue. They're adept yeah. at bite days. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, they've got a couple Bottom of... Bottom two. Those are really yeah, awesome yeah, yeah. looking like... Um, no, no, I've moved Android away. Stuff. No. no. Too late now. Jerry. That's okay. how it goes. Yeah. yeah See, I'm building... I don't make the rules. I'm building an Eldar Force at the moment, and I've been kind of looking for alter- a lot of alternative miniatures for things, because Games Workshop mm-hmm. yeah. have a very limited selection of Eldar, as we constantly say when it comes to their yeah, sort of range. Some of the sculpts are very old. Yes. So I've all, I'm always looking for things like alternative spirit seers and things because mm. there's like one plastic version and then there's an old resin one, fine cast that you can get on eBay, but mm. bleh, I don't want that. Um, mm. So looking for something a little bit different to use. Far seers and warlocks seer were always, always uh, yeah. underrepresented, shall we say, in their catalog. Yeah, and leave the field cast alone. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. You have no idea, not to go off on a tangent too much, you have no idea how much of the Lord of the Rings wow. range is still flag cast. It's, it's upsetting, but there we go. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is another thing straight from Destiny again. I find a lot of stuff from sci-fi. This is a it is sparrow. like a sparrow, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Space just bike. A, just a jet bike, Jerry, okay. it's okay. It's just a jet bike. Basically, the modern <laughs> rip-off of an old uh, speeder from... Star Wars, Jerry. More or less. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They are really fun to ride as well. Uh, anyway, another tangent. <laughs> but yeah, that's really cool, especially if you're trying to... Because again, the jet bikes haven't been redone for a billion years by not, Games Workshop. Not, yeah, not so. for the Eldar, weirdly. Uh, uh, whereas yeah. the Dark Eldar have got gorgeous jet bikes. They have. <laughs> oh my God, they're nice. They've got some beautiful mechanics, yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that was a newer set of jet bikes that they replaced. They yeah. had those jet bikes and went, no, these need to go away immediately. Let's replace them with gorgeous ones. What about the Eldar? <laughs> yeah. You sure? No. In the Dark Eldar got the, the wing blades off the Green Goblin. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, greater God. Oh. No. oh, look. Oh, look. I ask or what? No, no, 404. No. Nice. No. I see that. Like, obviously, that's been done to using like a Tau star force mm. with the iconography. Oh, but I could yeah. see that working in Warpath. I think that'd be really cool as like an Asterian. Oh God, yeah. That'd be really cool. You just, just take, take off the iconography. Or, the drones. Yeah, yeah. Or just paint the iconography different. And then I think that would work really well. That'd be, that'd be yeah, awesome. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even bother taking the iconography off. That's fine. Yeah. We're all fine here. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. Anyway. The greater good. The greater, the greater good. good. <laughs> I mean, that's a female Darth Vader, is it not? It is. Yeah, Unfortunately. yeah. With a samurai sword, was it? With a samurai sword. Oh, yeah. Now, this is some of their more newer, their newer stuff. Um, newerest, yes. Newerest, yeah. So, uh, I think it was previously over the last little while they'd done what was the Citizens of the Old World range, which mm. was them kind of looking at building up things like Bretonians and, and sort of witch hunters and sort of empire right. zealots, um, because their kind of idea was that, that they, you know, everyone loves these oh. kind of things. And so it's nice to see some people bringing back miniatures that could be used for playing Mordheim, you know, if you're still mm. playing that back in the day. Or- Yay! Say, so that's a very suspiciously chain axe looking axe <laughs> on that fantasy miniature. Yeah. So these ones look like the sci fi variants of. They are, they are. Yeah. So you could use. That man is wearing a fireproof glove. True. Oh. Yeah. Or he just really doesn't care because the emperor is protecting him. So. That's probably just incense. That's smoke. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about it. The incense is burning. <laughs> I mean, there's a that's a set of redemptionist. Pre- have they added redemptionist to Necromunda yet? They have. Yeah, they have did they? A, a new version of them. I think it was a couple of months ago. But obviously, if you want to do a little bit more with your core door and stuff, then these are great for that. Yeah. Although I also like the idea of using these as, I mean, obviously the obviously the redemptionists do believe in the emperor almost too much, mm. uh, but you could use these as part of like a normal imperial force as well, and sort of drop them in as kind of like the the priests and stuff that are trying to yeah. force the the troops into battle and thing. I used to so, use my but, redemptionists and Cordor as um, the pilgrim squads for my sisters to battle. Uh, cool. Yeah. Just have them running about with them. Yeah. Although I did see one incredibly impractical rifle there where the chain blade goes all the way down the front. Yeah, that's fine. So if you try and hold that to aim, you're going to be like... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, right? I think the key is 
don't turn on the oh. chain blade while you <laughs> I love that. It's like That's fry exciting. tuck fry tuck with a grenade launcher. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Back to our white priest. Running a book. Well, yeah, because some books yeah, are heresy. Book. Yeah, it must be a bad book. <laughs> not not all books are good. No. Some books are filth. My favourite out of all of them. Crazy cat lady throwing cats. <laughs> oh wow. There's your Simpsons callback for you. So. You can just she you can even hear they're not blah, blah, blah. that's literally that she just looks like she's raging at those. Blah, that's fantastic. Blah. Yeah. <laughs> she's furious. Always yeah, that's brilliant. Off my lawn. Yes. Even though she's living in a high city and doesn't have a lawn and has never heard of a lawn before. Yeah. Doesn't know what green is. Oh, oh, these are great. Yeah. The, the, this is from the latest her. Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. But actually, uh, it's not because he's from a very earlier Kickstarter. Yeah. So if you, I really like the ta- Taki guy. I think he's awesome. Kind of like, because you never get sort of like border prints and Araby stuff popping up in. That's uh, true. Uh, mm. uh, so it's good to see someone oh. sort of looking at that and trying to bring it to the fore. But yeah. I love that they've taken the idea that often the witch hunters had candles. Mm. Uh, and instead they've got no he's just got a full on fire <laughs> well he's on fire he, on his he, brazier on the head he's gone full yeah. Torquemada from 2000 AD true I mean it, it's it's kind of like he has to keep his brain warm so he can think better <laughs> makes sense a warm like brain Hades. is a pious brain it's just <laughs> like Hades out of Hercules I am the light America. of the world oh nice I love this picture and he's working ah. on the rats. And the rats are just like chilling out. They're going, it's fine. He is our yeah. friend. He's us. They look so happy as well. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they, they know they're going to go into a pie. Some dwarf will be very proud to get that at some point. <laughs> yeah, or he's, he's making rat burgers. Because, of course, that's a good rat burger. Spooky. Spooky. Mm. I would Perfect go one, <laughs> one step further and say not just spooky, but terrifying yeah, yeah. I, love the, I love the little kids faces poking oh, out I didn't see the one in the chest yeah, yeah, there's one. yeah, yeah there's the and the, the two gaps in the legs you can see them yeah just what, one, one of them's got the, the finger up going yeah. don't, t- don't tell anybody awesome. can just make everybody make sure that whenever they're playing this just don't have petrol anywhere near because everybody's got fire on them okay so <laughs> the magic happens I know <laughs> One one trip up and those candles will just fall straight on the floor. Okay. Fishwife? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Why Belfa- the naked cat? Belfast fishwife. <laughs> oh, the most terrifying kind? The most terrifying. <laughs> I, like, I really like the idea of using these to kind of supplement something Warhammer Fantasy roleplay. I think yeah. that'd be really nice. Yeah, towns people. Yeah. Do you, or, or just even use them as sort of NPCs in your games to like have them milling around while you're trying to do something and complete an objective and stuff like that. But it's, oh. it's, it's really nice bits, bits like this to kind of add more to skirmish style games so that when you're playing them, you can kind of, you feel like you're diving into almost like a living, breathing world, which is always nice. Um, that's not just populated by your characters just randomly running around ruins, killing each other. So, yeah. I love that's that guy. Awesome. It's yeah, that's great. Yeah. That is a demon monkey if I ever heard saw one. <laughs> make 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 a dogs of war army and use him as your paymaster. Mm. Okay. That's the way to go. Well replace Shake Your Dosh. Yeah. <laughs> that was his name. Back in the old days. That's when, when Games Watch have had a sense of humor. That so. was his name. Mm. Shake Aww. Your Dosh. <laughs> I mean, you know where the Primark Angron Ooh. got his name from? No. Where did he get where did they get Angron from? Named it after a barman at a pub they used to go to. Or go oh, to. Oh, um, right. And he was named Ron. He was always angry, so it was Anger Ron. Wow, there you go. <laughs> Thank you for that one, Dan Abnett. I love the um, posture on this one. Yes. Yeah. Creepy. Very creepy. I think it would and work very nicely with the spooky fellow that we saw before. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Just because sometimes you need pairs of spooky, creepy things. You do. Aww. At which point you're having to send little girls out to deal with them themselves. <laughs> yes, she's I'm having not, a redemption arc. I'm be. not going outside. You can go outside. I like the idea that maybe she's sort of. They've sort of taken the idea of Fulton from uh, Warhammer, and they've yeah. decided no. In actual fact, it was a savior lady or the savior girl that was the, the yeah, mightiest warrior in the empire. It's kind of got like a Joan of Arc feel to it. 
This yeah, is a yeah. suave, fine gentleman, isn't it? Oh, Cheers. yeah. Dressed in the Empire's finest. Mm. He has got many bonuses to earn the money to buy all that. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it a pet crow. May or may not Impressive. be a pet crow. That could be you, Jerry. That could be you. I'm not even lying. <laughs> this, this beard, beard is not magnificent enough. <laughs> neither, neither is his gut. There's yeah, always a Jerry S figure. There is yeah, always yeah, a Jerry. Yeah. Say, one of those faces that never go out of fashion. You know how you're always seeing, you know, I went to a, a museum and found a 16th century portrait of myself type of thing. Yeah, <laughs> that there will always be a me somewhere. Oh, that's brilliant. Mortality of Keanu Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> Just in time oh, that's cool. for Spooky Tuber. Yeah. Quite like oh, that. Lovely. Nice witch, yeah. Hair full of stuff. Woman of the Woods. Uh, I love that, this. That's brilliant. I mean, incoming damage, I think, you know, your shield might stop working after a certain point, but... Oh, I mean, you know... Barricades are always good. M- most most things will be stopped by a couple of... Well, a couple of feet of pig flesh. <laughs> no, I mean, you're fine. Yeah. And, if, and, if, and if he dies, you've got bacon for breakfast. Exactly. Then, true. Yeah. <laughs> I love the fact that they've even sculpted, sculpted a pair of spectacles onto this guy. Oh, yeah. Nice, tiny little detail like that. Mm-hmm. It's great. Yeah. It's, it's a with long rifle. Yeah. It's the thing that, as you know, we mentioned, is, is great about this stuff, is that it's like packed full of character. Yeah, like there's, there's so much on the miniatures for you to have fun with, which I think is really cool. Um, and as Jerry was mentioning as well at the beginning, like it's noticeably got like old world and old world and grim dark vibes to it. But mm. then they've also done something a little bit different and played around with characters as well, so that they could fit into different settings if you wanted to as well, which is cool. So, I mean, there's no reason why you wouldn't. I like the fact he's got two different breeds of dog. I was just thinking that. Two one for like hunting, that. one for killing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought sure, he was going to say one like for it. hunting, one for cuddling there, Ben. So <laughs> no. We're in two different places <laughs> with you. There is no cuddling <laughs> in the grim dark. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact he killed the, the zealot earlier and now he's just made him into like a torch for himself. Yep. Yeah. It's a real uh, shame we can't see her from behind because the buxom bar wench there actually has a long dagger. Uh, in her other oh. hand, in the small of her back, because I have a set of these. Cool. Um, oh, the hairpins are nice. The, hairpin, oh. the little skull hairpins, yeah. They're great. It's important that you tip Greta well. <laughs> 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 Things will go bad for you if you do not. She will take the tip herself. There's always got to be a rat seller. Mm, well, he's I, in my own personal Heresy Lab universe. Uh, he is the husband of the crazy cat lady. <laughs> 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 would make cats sense. fetch them yeah. yeah cats fetch them brilliant yeah. That, yeah. that's how they find their their rat wares she just throws cats <laughs> at whenever she sees a rat it's like <laughs> heaves it down an alleyway yeah. and if the rats are too big they'll give it to the butcher who's the, the cat lady's brother see we've yeah. got a whole yeah. family of tell yeah. makes sense <laughs> <laughs> oh that's pretty you could paint that very bright that's yeah, go, go full on on his motley. Mm-hmm. Bright colours and then cover him in blood so it looks even yeah. creepier. Yeah. Terrible. I, mean, I, just, I just have the line, stealth is optional for this mission. <laughs> <laughs> that would make sense. You need to stealth. Jingle, jingle, jingle. <laughs> <laughs> his hat, his shoes, you're very right. Oh, it's on the weapon and everything. Oh, yeah, there's so much jingle. And just yeah. in case there's not enough, he's got a bell. Just... Well, he's, M- he's murderous a Morris dancing. That's the way forward. <laughs> Just send send him down one alley, and you go in an entirely different direction. <laughs> Told you, I hit your jokes, Jester. <laughs> Why is everyone failing? <laughs> he does look like a bookcase is about to fall on him or something. Oh, that's that's great. He I... just looks like he's just going to get mauled by a bear, or it's going to be <laughs> his last, that. his last moment. That looks like Either that or three kids with a elk antlered skull are creeping in around his room at the moment. That that will do it. I shouldn't have tried those <laughs> mushrooms. I think the redemptionists have turned up because he's wearing an eight point at star on his chest. He's done something naughty. True. Yeah. Oh my god. 
God, all of these are so good. I think these are some of the more recent ones, aren't they? Or yep. well, or maybe like two Kickstarters ago, perhaps. But, Ooh. Oh, so good. Hunter. That's Very, a ranger. Um, Will Scarlet or Little John. Mm, mm. Yes. Because I seem to remember him being a bit bigger than the others. A personal stride, mm. that gentleman. And potentially Goblin and Orc, but City yeah. Guard. And the fact that your city guards aren't exclusively human is nice. That is cool. That is cool. It reminds me of the kind of look of stuff from Fabled Realms, actually, that does. That's cool. Mm. Yeah, I like the that. facial expressions are fantastic. I call them yeah. Coulon and Nobby. <laughs> <laughs> which is which, though? Oh, well, Nobby's the one on the back. Ah. Uh, oh. Nice. He's cute. Now, I know when they did these for the STL Kickstarter, there were some options for some of the hand weapons. Mm-hmm. I don't know if those are optional here or if you just get uh, what you say. It's not going to say, is it? It doesn't say, no. But uh, No. I wonder if we can find... Let's get rid of Michael and him. Mm-hmm. Where's the big fella? Ah. So this is where they started doing the kind of like warband stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So you had lots of stuff that could be built together to create um, sort of proper gangs rather than just having personalities, which was really nice. Yeah. Um, Look at that yeah. Tash. Oh. oh, that's glorious Tash, it's isn't glorious. it? Yeah. It's a loving his, like quilted coat. Mm. Oh, the the design work on the armor is absolutely gorgeous. Mm-hmm. You can see on that's all of the fabulous. citizen soldiers. Mm-hmm. It's gorgeous. I like. I always like that thing where they've like chained weapons to themselves because they're like, "Nope, you're gonna keep your weapon, whatever happens." <laughs> Don't want to drop it. Unless you lose your arm. <laughs> they all knew the risks. There's somebody being told politely to get back into line. Uh, Another fire gauntlet to the car. Yeah. One at a time, or all at once. Doesn't matter to him. <laughs> <laughs> They're gorgeous. Beautiful yeah. stuff. Yeah. Really good tech. There is. Did you say you've got a lot of this stuff, Jerry? I've got a chunk of the new stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the militia and some of the ogres. We have quite and they did the yeah. sisters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Yes. So you could do sis- sisters, sisters of Sigma, of Sigma. for yeah. more time. Very yeah. nice. That was one of those warbands back in the day that I really wanted to make, but like could never afford to. Yeah. Because uh, it was so much easier to make the uh, like Reichland or Witch Hunters or whatever from just using the plastic set of the militia. Yeah. Uh, whereas all the sisters of Sigma are all, We're all metal. Uh, metal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, question, to be to is, be fair, is that wood grain? Sculpted? There wood is wood grain yeah. on there, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Wow. She's got scars on her face as well, yeah. across like the eye and underneath the chin and stuff, which is cool. So yeah, underneath the lip, sorry. Yeah. Seen some fighting. Morgana, a fair enchantress. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Also. You can string a rubber band between the points on her hat <laughs> and use it like a catapult if you need additional rage. So, <laughs> if that's something you're looking for in a miniature, then this one. <laughs> this definitely that. delivers. This has that, yeah. yeah. You can get all little walls <laughs> with her head. Yeah. If she ever falls down as dead. Hmm? <laughs> you could honestly start your own mini game with that, Jerry. It's genius. Hmm. It's genius. But yeah. Absolutely spanking. Stunning stuff. Like yeah. a pot noodle, they are spanking gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> like I like that casual one. I mean, there are a few where okay. they're actually dynamic. I quite like mm-hmm. that. And it shows also from some of the early sort of uh, sci-fi ones, which were more static, that they're, they're managing to get even just a static pose to have a bit more movement in it mm-hmm. with the little sort of chuck out of the hip. And the flowing cloak elements mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. Yeah, because I mean, each, two, two bow women, very different. Yeah, so I was going to say, each of these are individually unique. They all have, like you were saying, Ben, each of these are really strong in character. Gotta love yeah. them. You can also pick up bundles. That's all right. Nice. So you don't need to see those, Ben. Bundle. Oh, God. You get your whole Mordheim gang and want you only yeah. have to click one button. Uh, have a look at some Britannians. Oh, that's cool. Just remember, you need to eat this month. Uh, yeah. Do you though? 
fish. Can you eat resin? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Might not be good for you, but true, true. That's it's beautiful. It's not on my shelf anymore. He is really nice. He- I love, yeah, I love the idea of doing like sort of alternative, um, sort of like orders within like a Bretonian mm. thing. So having them with the kind of like the beast stuff attached could sort of link them more to the Green Knight and do something a little bit more kind of like Fey with them. I think that would be really cool. Well, the uh, thing that struck me with this one, because I believe he came with a standard Great Helm, and then he came with this one with the Deer Head. I was looking at right. going. We well, just give him a hammer instead of a sword, and you've got Robert Baratheon. Well, yes, yeah, Jeez. true. Yeah. Thumping down people like you have. I quite. I put the deer head on myself because it's really nice. That's beautiful. And there's. Uh, well, well, literally, Rock, like Rocksteady. <laughs> Which one was the boar? Okay. Rocksteady. I can't remember. The Rocksteady Knight. He's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Fight, I think but. he is. Watch me get it wrong now, and someone in the comments will be like, "No, <laughs> Feebok, I've got yeah." You yeah. failed. That's what they're there for. Oh, I love that That's double so cool. chain mace. Um, have a quick look at some bits before we go. I think. Yeah. So, um, as well as doing all the kind of sci-fi and fantasy stuff in kind of like figure form, they also do these bits packs. Um, so they're kind of just ways for you to kind of individualize what you already have within the sci-fi force. Um, so things like thing you know like Hades sword sets. If you're ever wor- worried where the close combat weapons are on your miniatures, well, mm. stick swords onto their belts. Um, which I think is really awesome. And then obviously you've got things that are very themed towards space marines and all sorts of bits and pieces in there too, which is cool. So, oh man, well I those like sort of like detail. Yeah, I like the power swords are cool. And then you've got the ones with the sort of scripture on the blades would be absolutely perfect for all those people buying black templars at the moment. So. So, yeah, very very nice. true. I like it reversed, mm, presumably. I do. As if it's going all the way through, mm-hmm. which I'm sure some people won't like, but their opinion <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> That's an so, so, step so when they hold it up in the mirror, they can uh, see the. <laughs> well, it's it's whenever you hit somebody with the flat of the blade with the backhand It'll, slap, and oh, then yeah. it just writes it down it, their face, and, every, their face yeah. and they know <laughs> what they've done wrong in future. <laughs> You were bad enough to get a warning. If you've got a face print, you'd be warned. If you do something Branded. badly again, then yeah. they'll use edge first and just take your head off. But that is, I mean, that's it's like a, a couple of basilica on your back. Mm. Nice. Take to the skies in your own cathedral. Yeah. So. And there's a whole, ooh, sh- screaming heads. Yeah. Is that the, the Hades headset? Mm-hmm. Give them nice pale skin, dark eyes, black hair. Mm. Make them a creepy, a creepy bunch. Let's make that one and two, Mr. T. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With the mohawk. I ain't getting none no Thunderhawk fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the old gladiator one. Mm. Oh, I like that one. Spaniard. Yes. That's gorgeous. Mm. Thank you. You'd have like to paint that up correctly, though, wouldn't you? you would. You'd have oh, to paint the uh, All the chrome. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. Who, who's got the bum, 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 stuck in their head, though? You mean parts of the Caribbean? No, wait. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's I the same no. song. <laughs> I, I'll take yes. your word for it. I've never watched Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, okay. Right. They're basically the same song, Jerry. <laughs> was, it yeah. the same, was it the same... Um, it was the same composer. Composer. So. <laughs> All right. Because some, sometimes when I'm doing Star Wars, I slip into Superman and vice versa. <laughs> so, speaking of which. Nice. Mm. Now, I, I would assume that all of these are kind of like Space marine scale. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'd be interested to see how these work on, see if they, if they would work with more human stuff as well. Because mm. I reckon you could do some interesting things, maybe like taking stuff from War Games Atlantic. And, and like, because those give me like an Eisenkern vibe and everything as well, which is yeah. cool. So you could use them it, for that. But. It's interesting because some of the bits are obviously part of their older range because they started doing bits and then went into full miniatures. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I'd be wondering, are these scaled to Space Marines rather than Primaris? Um, well, it doesn't say. Here. I don't know, to be honest. Oh, the Cobra one. 
Very cool. You can usually get away with both, to be honest, at the moment. So, oh. Cobra. It's very I will looking. find G.I. Joe. <laughs> Cobras. That is pretty. That's really different. Well, the thing that's nice about that is that if you get enough of those to make your squads, suddenly you've got an entirely themed like Chaos Force, mm. simpler by adding new helmets onto them. And then if you used a lot of kind of like Alpha Legion iconography, you could build them as sort of like a, I don't know whether or not, do Chaos have successor chapters? I don't know. But no, most of them are immortal. Be... Ooh. But you could do something fun with that. How Cobra can you go? Yeah. Have them hunting down. A Conan style fellow. <laughs> Crom. God, that's cool. Only there was like a Johnny Lawrence head that I could stick on one of these. <laughs> wacky, wacky fun. Right, well, mm. there we have it. Yes. Yeah. A whole kit and caboodle of stuff for fantasy and sci fi from Heresy Labs, folks. Well worth checking out if you fancy looking for some unusual bits. I was also going to say, make sure to keep an eye out for some stuff for them for Kickstarter. Mm. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, in the show notes, I'll put a link through to their kind of like landing page on their latest one. So you can go and check that out and see what they've been doing. Because as I was saying, a lot of that stuff appears on their web store, but they have been doing a lot of bits and pieces through Kickstarter. And as Jerry was saying, it's all that STL digital stuff as well. So yeah. if you like printing things at home, there's plenty to go and have a look at. So. Mm. We're going to take a quick switch. And when we come back, we'll get stuck into the news. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh- you love. It's the Muck f- News. <laughs> okay, Ben, what has been happening in the week of tabletop gaming news? Oh, well, we're starting things off with uh, some news from the folks at uh, Warlord Games because they have opened up the pre-orders for their new campaign supplement for Bolt Action, which is called Soft Underbelly. But alongside that, they've also uh, put together pre-orders for a new plastic kit. Uh, So this is a new plastic kit that's going to be used for the Italians, which are obviously an integral part of the Soft Underbelly element of world war ii uh, this will allow you to build your italian army soldiers which sounds like something from an oh 80s God. movie one of them is doing this <laughs> one of them is doing this no the grenade was not cooked uh, properly uh, that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> sorry to all italian viewers uh, and then you also have elements and bits and pieces in here for making black shirts as well if you want to so you can use this italian kit for making uh, soldiers basically from a wrap from a cross the sort of scope of World War II, which mm. is pretty awesome. Just to give you an idea of the kind of things that you can get you get in this set, you've got a whole range of different weapons. I'm just going to go through them now. It's going to sound like I'm just reading off binary. You've got M90, M91 rifles, M91 38 Carcano cavalry carbines, M3A A Beretta SMGs, M38 Carcano carbines, M1934, 9mm Beretta pistols, and Breeder 4, oh, sorry, M30. LMGs. So you've got quite a lot of bits and pieces in there as well. There are also a whole bunch of um, head options in there too. So as I said, you've got bits and pieces for sort of like make Italian soldiers from across the, the range of the war. So you've got M33 steel helmets, Bastina yeah. caps, M1935 pith helmets, black shirt soft fezzes, and black shirt hard fezzes for those people that want to distinguish themselves. Mm-hmm. So some really nice bits and pieces on here, as you can see. And it was nice to actually get a kind of like look at the whole sprue as well as the finished miniatures, just yeah. so you can have a look at the options, which I think was really nice. Uh, Although whoever's doing their Photoshop, please stop. It's a horrible <laughs> Harsh, Justin. Harsh. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, just doing it myself so much that someone has just went in with the magic wand on that. It's just like, please do better. Well, not all of us are experts, Justin. No. Uh, but yes, in addition to all of that, you've obviously got those different sort of like accessories on the sprues. So you've got gas masks, you've got bags, you've got holders, you've got goggles, you've got bayonets, you've got combat knives, and plenty more as well. Uh, and as I say, it can be used sort of like across the, the breadth of the Italian war effort effectively. Uh, but mostly is kind of like focused in around this idea of like that soft underbelly campaign where the mm-hmm. Allies pushed up sort of like from North Africa and the Mediterranean up into Italy to sort of take it to the axis there, as it were. Uh, So you've got some really interesting bits and pieces in this book in particular as well. 
So one of the things I learned about this, sort of doing a little bit of background research from the guys at Warlord, is it sort of like looks at the Italians as they were at the time. Mm-hmm. So it purposely puts in rules that kind of talk about their sort of like lack of discipline and their sort of like the the, the way that they use the equipment and that kind of thing. So it's 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 putting them forward as almost like a narrative force in a way, which I think sure. is really nice. So they are going to be sort of like underdeveloped next to the allies and then sort of like pushing up to Italy, which I think is really awesome. Because it means that when you play through your campaigns, you've got a kind of like a sort of like a, what do they call it? You know, when you've got two sides that are very different. God damn it, I forgot the word. Asymmetric. Asymmetrical. Hey. God, I love that word. So yes, they've got their, that there yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, in addition to the plastic set, and also you've got the, the little campaign book there too, you can also get a pre-order miniature as well. Mm. So you've got Enrico Francisi, the fighting general, who was an inspirational leader uh, that won the Italian gold medal for military valour. Posthumous, uh, unfortunately, but, mm. uh, but yes, uh, a, a very you know valiant. He died. I don't know how he died. No, he didn't say. Spoilers. Spoilers for the war. On, <laughs> uh, he was standing on top of a piece of um, self-propelled artillery or anti-tank okay. uh, gun, and and a incoming tank shell decapitated him. No way. Wow. Mm. Way, as I believe that's, the kids say. <laughs> that's a way to go. That, that, that is, is a way to go. But he he. He was a fighter from oh, 1910. He, he fought in the uh, Italian-Turkish wars, and then he huh. joined the National Army later on. He fought pretty much every front and then retired and came back as part of uh, Mussolini's black shirt. So oh, right. yeah, he, he was everywhere on pretty much all the fronts. So, pretty awesome. And, and, but interesting that they've included him rather than you know uh, somebody else that you, you – know, especially with things like Libya and North Africa being more predominant. I would have thought they, they may have included one of the generals from there or like Field Marshal mm. Bardolio or somebody like that. But uh, yeah, interesting that they've gone a little bit off book for that. What's up next then? Uh, so next up, we move to the realm of sci-fi because uh, we have some news from the guys at Corvus Belly for what's coming in November 2021 mm. for Infinity and Code 1. Um, so we start off with a little bit of a kind of sort of Ariadne spice i guess you'd say uh, so we have the Varengian guard there that you see there which is pretty awesome uh rocking an incredibly epic sci-fi hammer style mm. weapon which i think is brilliant yeah. and uh grit, gritting her teeth as well which i think is fantastic uh it doesn't have to just be used for ariadna as well uh, this is a mercenary as the Varengian guard were back mm. in the day uh so yeah. it can also be used for o12 as well which is pretty nice cool. so if you want to throw it to the mix you can do yeah, gorgeous miniature, um, as always, from the, uh, the folks at uh, Corpus Belly. Uh, really showing off kind of like the character of their miniatures. Which Definitely. Is awesome Not certain if those are two rockets on that head there. That would I, be cool. I, I just yeah. feel like if you're driving a spike into somebody getting rocket thrust assist on an very, very it's right. it's from Overwatch, yes. <laughs> it's a very uh, sci-fi way of doing it. That is. Yeah. It, it might be explosive charges as well. Could also you know, be like reactive yeah. armor, reactive weapon. Yeah. That'd be Fright- pretty cool. Frightening, yeah. nevertheless. No. Uh, we also have the 112 Emergency Services oh. motorized uh, individual there as well. Uh, so if you want to get your medic to all the different place in the battlefield where everyone's crying out for uh, for help, then you can do so with this. Um, obviously, comes with a medipack, so you can zoom That's around, nice. bring all your troops back to full health. Uh, and also comes with a handy fire axe, because mm. sometimes you need to hit someone. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where that's useful. It, it, you don't take the axe. On the long way down. <laughs> that that too. You don't think the access to gain access to people who are injured then? Oh, no, nope. it's to gain access to their bodily fluids by okay. hitting them. That's the uh... <laughs> sometimes blood transfusion services on the field are exactly. the yeah. heart transplant. Nice. Yeah. Exactly. That okay? Yeah. yeah. It's a oh, fine looking bike. Yeah. Mm. Uh, then we have some of the most impressive miniatures from the Ariadne okay. set, uh, where we have the new Ariadna Beast Pack. Um, so this is going sort of like taking things to different. So obviously we've had the Antipodes, mm-hmm. which are kind of like your werewolves within yeah. the world of Infinity for the Ariadna, which are just amazing. Who doesn't like dog soldiers? Of course. But this is where this lovely controller from Ariadna is bringing the bear podes. Oh, place. come so, on. Why would you not want to introduce a massive battle bear in full sci-fi armor with a big gun and a hammer. I mean, what's not to love about this? I that think it bear looks fantastic. He knows how to use his thumbs. That's what I want to say. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, you can't look the amount of 
armor that's already on a grizzly bear anyway and you're just doubling that up that's fantastic isn't it you put your toothpaste in that metal box smash right now yes so uh, so like yugi then exactly yes (laughs) you started a forest fire get smoky in there that's that's smoky (laughs) yes smoky Uh, but yeah so this is actually going to be one of the um uh, seer cast miniatures that mm. they're doing for this new collection so oh. this will be that sort of like injected thermoplastic which I think is pretty awesome which we showed off at UK Games Expo this year which is very nice mm-hmm. uh, so it'll be really fascinating to see how all the detail holds on that we liked the samples and stuff that we'd seen but um, as far it, as it aware, looks amazing in that painted version yeah as far as I'm aware all of the painted versions that are going to be seer cast were painted using the seer cast figure so Brilliant. it's not yeah. it's not a, a prototype resin that they've painted because yeah. mm-hmm. uh, I know yeah. they did that for the, the big figures as well yeah uh, then we're moving to the other side of things because you've got glorious Ariadna and then you've got pesky Pano. Yeah. Pano. <laughs> However, look at these amazing knights. So we have Padre Inquisitor Mendoza there looking absolutely fantastic. Yes. We need to bring down that amazing looking sword on someone's head and bisect them. Mm. Uh, probably going to cut a combine in half, perhaps, I think. I but, wonder if they've done what we said earlier with the uh, writing on the sword, if oh. it's backwards on the other <laughs> side. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh... the sizzling into flesh. Um, mm. But yes, uh, a very awesome miniature. And I always like seeing the stuff from Pano, even though Pano, uh, because uh, I love the fact that they've done that kind of like sci-fi night thing, which I think is great. Yes. Uh, and it's really fun to see that sort of brought it to the mix here again with this miniature in particular. Um, really getting across that sort of like knightly quality. Yeah, cool. the military orders just look great. They really do. Shame really about the do. rest of Pano. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> my heart and my allegiance will always be to the, the greatest nation of all of infinity, which is Eugene. Well, I mean, yes, that is true. Super fantastic, yeah. great. Yeah. And, and <laughs> going from one side of the Crusades to the other then. Exactly, yes. Uh, so you've got one knightly... Uh, Mighty warrior there. We also have Saladin oh. here. Um, so this is the O12 liaison officer. So this obviously works for Hack Islam, but also works with O12. But it's actually a Aleph sort of mm. um, clone that has been designed and then given to Hack Islam, which I think is pretty awesome. Uh, That's he's, amazing. He's so sort of um, he's embraced his culture um, within Hack Islam that he's now very much more on their side than he is on Aleph's side or anything like that. Although I'm sure there'd be some kind of chip in the back of his head that they could flick if they really wanted to. Mm, uh, makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but a fantastic looking miniature. And I love that it kind of gets across that sort of like stoic control element yeah. of the battlefield where he's kind of like just taking things in and when he needs to, he'll whip out that sword and cut you in half or something. So, yeah. It's a nice cool. looking sculpt as well. I think that they had a Saladin model before. I believe they did, actually. Um, so yeah. this is obviously bringing it a bit more up to date. Yeah, sort of building on the story in there mm. within Infinity, which is really nice to see. Uh, but yeah, stunning miniature once again. And Hack Islam have some of the, sort of the, the best looking miniatures out there. Mm. Uh, again, especially bringing together some sort of like that kind of like historical fantasy elements and then mm. merging that together with sci-fi, which I think is always nice to see. So, yeah. Uh, and then we kick, we well, we finish things off, not kick things off, but I'm sure these things will kick off some combat. Uh, we have the Nomads Remotes pack uh, for those people that want to dive into a little bit of Code One. This has been designed for that as well. Yeah. Um, these again are going to be part of the Seocast uh, sort of uh, thermoplastic range as well. So uh, all of that detail that you see baked into there comes from their new plastics, which is pretty awesome, uh, rather than traditional metals. Uh, and considering how fiddly these would probably be to build in metal with all those additional legs and things you're going to have to balance, I think having the sort of like plasticky um, stuff uh, to work with is probably a little easier on hobbyists, I would say. Mm. And easier on your wallet as well. That is also true. There is that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, stunning miniatures once again uh, from the folks at Corpus Belly. These are all going to be available in late November, so watch out for those. Yeah. The October releases, which I'm sure we talked about in the past, uh, you will have seen on the website as well if you want to go and check that out, uh, should be available very, very soon in the next couple of weeks. Um, so yes, look out for more good stuff from Corpus Belly in the future. Tag Raid is on the horizon. So, yeah, yes. well, I'm sure we'll be hearing all about that oh, yes. in time to come yeah. as well. Yes. Uh, but moving away from the far off reaches of space and into the depths of the ocean free. Mm-hmm. Squid Ink has been announced by WizKids and it's coming in April 22. So I'm not talking about that 
a board game alternative adventure of the Netflix series that everybody keeps telling me about. <laughs> and I haven't seen it, so please don't spoil it. I'm actually talking about um, a large underwater corporation um, where you have to juggle office politics between some really spiky staff members. So working in an office can be quite stressful. So in an office, you've got to be aware of a hierarchy, who you answer to and when, meeting deadlines, juggling workloads, alongside some really interesting office politics. So Squid Inc. takes that wonderful work buzz and places the themes into like a deep blue world's most prestigious underwater company. So players get control over a hierarchy of fishy stuff. They grow their abilities and the business and how and the influence, and they work their way up a greasy pole of success. And players attempt to show that they're the best in business. But that mm-hmm. sounds lovely. That sounds great, doesn't it? It sounds really nice. But while you're providing your worth and, and bring a whole team to success, if that's the tactic you want to play, that's really lovely. But within the work environment, there are sharks as well. So the sharks may not be the sharks seen on the front cover, there are sharks being your opponent. So they're going to want to halt your progress. They're mm. going to want to see you at the bottom. So if you do want to play that good employee and show off your skills in a noble way, you're welcome to you. Go for it. But I'm not sure your opponents are going to do the same. So other players are going to want to be hire their own employees and ensuring that they fit and they're in the win. And they're going to want to stab you and take you down by demoting and dismissing and hindering your progress as well. So you've got loads of underwater characters as well. So you've got hammerhead sharks, a puffer fish that can be a bit of a bad mother puffer. So you can, <laughs> I can't, I can't not do the fish puns. I can't not do the fish puns. I'm really sorry. Yeah. So if you do think you've got a bit of a mind for management um, and the very best of a booming corporation, be sure to take a look at very Squid. Because cool. it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it looks, it looks fun. I like it kind of like... Yeah, it's got card drafting, which is pretty cool. I always like card drafting. And I like the look, I like the kind of like tongue in cheek nature of the game as a whole. I think that really works really yeah. nicely. Um, yeah, very cool. Very yeah, cool. To say it caps out nice. four players, I'm trying mm-hmm. to decide. Yeah, yeah two, two to four players. players. Two to four players. Done, is done by the medium of seahorses. Yeah. You'll have to calculate your net worth. Oh. And mm-hmm. oh. Make sure that your friends aren't carping on about their strategies. Again, I see what you did there. Oh, it's we, brilliant. We all saw it. <laughs> you, know, you know it would be 10 times as bad if Lloyd was here anyway. That's true. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In that respect, we dodged a bullet. Uh, but now people are looking to dodge some bayonets as well. Mm-hmm. As Northstar gets stuck into a new game from Joe McCullough. Oh, yes. So uh, the Silver Bayonet from Osprey Games in German Colour uh, is available sort of like around the world now, which is pretty oh. awesome. And alongside that uh, is a new range of metal figures in 28 mil from the folks at North Star. Uh, so talking about uh, dodging bullets, these are dodging silver bullets, while well, the werewolves are anyway. Mm. Uh, we have some fantastic new miniatures that have been designed for the different sort of nationalities that you get in the game. Uh, so when you set up a, a sort of gang to or a or a war band, I guess you'd say, in the game. You actually get to choose between the different nationalities. So you've got things like the British, the French, the Austrians, the Spanish, and lots, lots more. And so within that, they've designed a whole bunch of different characters that sort of carry over that historical influence, but then add in elements of kind of like that occultist, that occult-ish nature, mm-hmm. and sort of like the fantasy elements at the same time. So you'll see, for example, you've got lots of things like the uh, the officers and the grenadiers and all that kind of thing in their traditional sort of like outfits that you'd imagine they would wear during the war, but they also then have like crosses around their necks and they have little bundles of sort of uh, trinkets and and sort of potions at their belts and that kind of thing. And then in addition to having sort of those slightly more historical figures, you've then got the very much sort of like uh, the fantasy elements built in there as well. So you've got things like cultists and uh, wizards and witches and all sorts of different things in there too, which is really nice to see. So they've really done a good job of kind of bringing together uh, sort of the historical and the fantastical, that sort of Mm. pulpy weirdness at the same time to create a really fascinating looking game uh, with a really, really nice range. Um, when this initially sort of launched on North Star, I think it was this week actually, it all sold out very quickly. Mm. But I believe that a lot more of this stuff is getting pumped into the the sort of silver bayonet engine, as it were, yeah. uh, for people to pick up and stuff, which is very nice. But really stunning figures um, okay. once again. Yeah. They have a, a whole page set up where you can lay your hands on these, but they've also gone through their catalogue um, 
and plucked out bits and pieces that are relevant from mm -hmm. the other lines that they stalk, be it Frostgrave or some of the lines like Crusade or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mark Copplestone's Ghost is in there that I bought from Grenadier 30 odd years ago. Wow. Uh, over 30 <laughs> years ago. It's nice to see that ghost still floating around. But um, it shows the amount of of variation you can use to get it on the the tabletop. The fact that they've done these is is really nice. Um, they have said they won't be doing plastic kits because there's yes, more than enough plastic Napoleonics out there. Uh, and I think for a game like this, potentially you don't want plastic kit um, of massed Napoleonic troops. I think having the more characterful figures yeah, is the yeah. way to do it. And yeah. then everybody will play Austrians because they get a dampire. <laughs> dampire. <laughs> Yeah, there's some there's some really cool stuff in this, and the silver bayonet itself uh, is shaping up very very nicely indeed. I'm just gonna I'm gonna reach over this. Look, look, we got the, we got the book. Ah, oh, that's a beautiful oh, book. Oh, oh, book. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh that's a beautiful sexy. book. Sexy. That is delightful. See my, this. Mine's sitting on my bedside table at the moment because I'm reading mine. This Sorry, is how you me. get historic uh, fantasy gamers into historical. This. Yes, this is the mm -hmm. prime Voice example versus. of how you do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's certainly an interesting way of trying it. Um, actually, War Games Illustrated last month, their feature, their cover feature was adding fantasy to uh, historics. It was, uh, yeah. as, a, as an idea to sort of not just draw people from one side to the other, but also um, to just change up how the, your gaming's sort of play out. So you maybe you're a Napoleonic player who plays a lot of sharp practice or um, whatever it happens to be, but then sprinkling in some unusual brother who the wolf style vampires or werewolves uh, can change those games from being maybe the the same sort of you can play the same scenario essentially two weeks in a row but have totally different feel for a game yeah. just by changing yeah. the rules and adding that sort of fantasy sprinkle so mm. fascinating to see nonetheless i imagine that's going to be another um knockout blow from joe anyway i would imagine it will be yeah it's it's a fairly tight set of rules and i like yeah. i like the fact he's added the uh, napoleonics there so yeah i will say as well just in case people are interested obviously mccullo does a lot of really fantastic stuff for sort of competitive things and mm. cooperative and stuff there is a full solo mode in the book as well so if you're looking at this and thinking i don't have anyone to play with you can That's play the game yourself so go and buy some miniatures have fun sweet to the beat and speaking of beat bebop <laughs> oh wow that, that was a good segue that one jerry the yeah. the incredibly popular cowboy bebop anime is getting its own official rpg so the french publisher don't panic games um are going to be adapting the universe for a role-playing game so players step into cowboy bebop universe as bounty hunters in space and this is going to be heading over to kickstarter in 2022 so what i was a bit concerned about myself is i'm actually quite protective over tv shows and stuff like that as you know especially animes and stuff if somebody told me that they were going to bring out a gurren Lagan rpg i think i'd cry um but <laughs> uh, yeah but uh, having previous board games with don't uh, panic games as well that are on naruto and attack on titan it doesn't seem that abnormal so it's quite excited to see um don't panic games go into a bit of a new venture with another anime title but there's not much out about the game at the moment but if you are going to spiel, um, don't panic games are there as well. And they're going to have a whole leaflet presentation exclusively for the game. Brilliant. So if you are having a if you are popping to spiel, do make sure to have a look to see what they've got on their booth. Um their booth is 2D115. So if you are interested in going over there, do have a look. But well remembered. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> but to be fair, if you do want to find out a lot more about this, um don't Panic Games have got um, a newsletter where you can subscribe to, and not only do you find out more information than that, you can have early access to playtesting. So they are picking a couple of their subscribers to playtest uh, just to get grips before it goes into crowdfunding, before it goes to retail. And if you just want to... Uh, have your say in the world let's say but uh, it looks really really interesting and i know that cowboy bebop has a massive following oh yeah so it's quite cool to see where it's going to go i imagine it's something not dissimilar to the honky tonk band with uh clint eastwood cowboy bebop oh, very different very, very different, different. <laughs> I, I don't need to be convinced i imagine it's exactly like honky well, tonk man with the uh, with the live action series on its way, sort of like Oops. I think it's next year, isn't it? I think it's yep. going to be really fun to see sort of what they do with this. Clearly, Cowboy Bebop has had a little bit of a resurgence. Uh, it's a very very good um, anime. 
Uh, so if you want to go and check it, and it's also very condensed as well. It's not one of those big sprawling ones that lasts over like a billion seasons. Mm. Uh, it's very short and condensed, but it's very, very good. Top of the game stuff. Movie though, it still confused me. Yeah, well, yeah. But uh, maybe, when did you watch it, Justin? Like, uh, when- no, no, I, I watched the anime years upon years ago whenever I was a teen. And okay. the movie, when it came out, I watched it. And the movie was just like, it, it, okay, it's Bebop. It, it's it's so confusing. Okay, whatever. I'm enjoying it. It's Bebop. See, because it might be one of those things where you come back to it when you're a little bit older and it'll be one of those things where you go, oh, I get this now kind of thing. So, Because uh, I've had that plenty of times with a lot of stuff, so it'd be cool. So. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it should be cool. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fascinating for all you manga fans out there then. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Apparently. That's right, isn't it? It is manga. That's, is that the anime is the animation, manga are right. the books. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Closing the word, Jerry. None of the yeah. words make any sense. It's all right. Well, we, we can get him a, a set of uh, no. My Hero Academia for Christmas. No, you're okay. You will be a weeb anyway. Um, <laughs> no, well, uh, moving on from uh, Weebdom, we also have some cool stuff for World War One that was announced this week. Um, mm. So Firelock Games have put together completely free rules for you to play as the Russian Imperial Army right. in Blood and Valor, which is their World War One game. Mm. Uh, so the rules are going to cover them uh, from the period of 1914 to 1916 before, obviously, some things happened. Uh, mm. Which you know they probably didn't want to happen, but there we go. Although at least a certain amount of people did. Want to happen, Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. There was a civil war. <laughs> uh, but yes, there's some really awesome stuff in there for people to dive into and check out over on their uh, mm. website at the moment. Um, as I say, it covers the the forces from that period, but it'll also allow you to kind of like play that sort of like transition period as well if you wanted to as well which is really nice to see um a lot of different companies making um world war one russians mm-hmm. in both plastic and in metal at the moment mm. uh, so it seems like they're very much the zeitgeist um we've also seen a lot of companies doing uh world war one stuff just from the eastern front in general yeah uh, recently it's also eureka have done some really awesome serbians and uh, uh bulgarians which Bulgarians, is pretty awesome yeah. Uh, so definitely people are diving in and sort of like thinking again about the Eastern Front in World War One, and kind of giving a little bit more of a, like a, a new lease of life, I think, which is really nice. Mm-hmm. I, I always feel like the Great War in particular, and I'm sure this, you know, isn't necessarily the case for all things, but from sort of like an outsider's perspective, always feels like it's kind of like second fiddle to World War Two in a lot of ways. Um, so it'd be really nice to see uh, more companies doing stuff like this to build up the sort of like... Mm. Not, not notoriety, but sort of, you know what I mean? The sort of yeah. fame of World War One and, and the stories of World War One, so that people can dive in and, and play something that maybe they've never really considered before. I think uh, which, you know. people often think about, and they made this board for um, display purposes, mm-hmm. and it has trenches on it, but it's all about the skirmish actions, and World War One is not all about trench warfare. Exactly. I think yeah. a lot of people yeah. get the mindset that, you just have just to, a song. <laughs> you just stand on either side of the board and chuck dice until it comes yeah. Uh, it's like fascinating. That's what people think. Yeah, fascinating to see. I know that the white and red armies are both in the upcoming supplement. Um, I thought the Russian Imperial was going to be in there as well. Potentially, they've excised it for space, and this is why we're getting it early. Um, and then that way, you've still got the Russian army, or maybe this is just a little preview of their current work in progress for. Blood and Valor. Uh, hopefully, I'll be it sitting down be. with Rufus in the not too distant future to have a chat Very with him nice. about the uh, yeah. what they're doing for that Blood and Valor supplement because it moves away from World War One specifically and opens it up into both other avenues within World War One, but also then the other fights that were happening, the civil wars. So you have the the Irish Civil War, the Irish Rebellion in there wow, as well, nice. uh, plus Ooh, obviously the Russian. Civil War, because it's a really good set of rules for that 1914 through to the interwar period. Um, yeah. So it covers a, a broad spectrum of stuff in there. So it'd be fascinating to see exactly what they do. I don't know yeah. if they've added the Boxer Rebellion. Hmm. Want to well, ask Rufus when I get there the are miniatures coming out so from there, Warhead's yeah. Atlantic, so maybe they'll have a look at that, but that'd be cool. Mm. Uh, I would also say that we do have uh, Let's Play of Blood of Valor um, over on the website. Mm. Uh, so if you want to go and check out how the game plays, uh, obviously, Firelock Games done some really nice stuff with uh, Blood and Plunder in the past. So, if you're like, "Ooh, World War One from Firelock Games," go and check it out and see what you think. Uh, yeah, yeah, cool stuff. We have one final bit of news to take one us more. out. 
one. Yes, we do. Yeah, so it's a little bit of Games Workshop news. Mm -hmm. Uh, So Warhammer Underworld's Harrow Deep is going to be up for pre-order this weekend uh, with everyone's favourite Stormcast Eternals and Justin's favourites, the Cunning Crew. Not at all. He doesn't like them. (laughs) I love them. They're weird looking. I don't know. They they just They're weird looking. (laughs) I hated Lord of the Rings. Okay. Okay. I went full, I went full Gre- Greta Thunberg there. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> you have taken it away. I thought it was Strike Armor. Uh, but yeah, so you get two warbands in this set. Wonderful. <laughs> they look great. So yeah, you've got Zandia's Truth Seekers, as you can see there, in that new Thunder Strike Armor, I was alluding to. Uh, three very different looking sculpts there that give you sort of different options, as is the way with a lot of the Stormcast stuff. It's very much kind of like a Jack of All Trades style warband. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you have the slightly more sort of um, focused, sort of sneaky, Capture style gameplay of the cunning crew there yeah. for the crew boys and the Auric War clans. Uh, definitely, as we were saying, rocking that kind of like Peter Jackson as old uh, sort of gun to bad look, which is pretty cool to me at least. Yeah. Uh, you also got a little hob grind in the background there as well with his arm being cut off, with a, little, with a little shank on the end of it for shanking things. <laughs> but yeah, very nice indeed. Um, but yes, um, for those people that have maybe not played Warhammer Worlds before, uh, this is a good sort of like opportunity to dive in and give it a go if you don't want to go with the starter set because this is the set that introduces uh, Rivals decks. Uh, so Rivals decks um, sort of step away from the kind of deck building formula that you will have seen in one run builds in the past mm-hmm. and instead to give you two decks right out of the box that you can play just immediately with. And they have, well, they, at least they've said, that they're competitive. Uh, so they should be able to be used in tournaments and stuff if you are slightly more competitively minded in that respect too. Mm-hmm. So they're like uh, pre-constructed then? You're not- pre-constructed decks, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's so, interesting. For example, I mean, a lot of companies are doing something similar to that, like um, Fantasy Flight Games. Obviously, it's a cooperative game, so it's not really completely sort of online of it, but Marvel Champions had yeah. completely pre-constructed decks that you yeah, just yeah. get out of the pack and start playing the game with. Uh, obviously, deck building isn't going away, and there are still going to be formats for you to do that in tournaments, uh, but this has been designed so that anybody can just dive in and start playing the game on more of an even footing, I think, when it comes to competitive stuff. And that's kind of where Warhammer Underworld has always aimed itself anyway, at that kind of um, sort of competitive level. Um, I will say, though, um, if you are interested in getting into Age of Sigma and you are somewhat daunted by the cost of diving into a Games Workshop game, Warhammer Underworld is really, really good for this uh, because the starter sets themselves are, you know, reasonably priced so around 30 40 pounds which isn't too bad but then each of the different sort of packs that you can get which come with the war bands are around 15 to 20 quid sometimes a little bit cheaper sometimes a bit more expensive and they give you a really nice taste of a faction mm-hmm. and and the feel of it and the models and everything without having to dive into buying everything for say the silver net or the auric war plans or anything like yeah, that so yeah if you're interested in edge of sigma and the kind of world behind it I, I reckon that Warhammer Underworld is definitely something you give a go. And the mechanics are really simple as well. This is what's going to break me into Games Workshop. <laughs> this is what's going to break me into Age of Sigmar. Because I've been looking at Age of Sigmar for ages now, and then all of a sudden there's card game, and I'm like, I was looking at, at, at Underworlds for ages, but I know that there wasn't as many players out there. And then they go and bring this, and with the minis and everything. Yeah, this is what's going to corrupt me, I think. I, I broke me years ago free. So yeah. there are like five warbands in here, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's one way to go and certainly food for thought mm. for anybody thinking about delving into the world of age of sigmar but now we're going to move on and when we come back we'll be taking a look at some 3d printing so we are back and we're going to be taking a look at some 3d printing then who have you found for us this week ben so uh, the um, company, I guess, uh, that I picked up for this week uh, is called The Maker's Cult, which sounds like a perfect name for the crazy stuff they do. Uh, so uh, if you have ever been interested in the idea of playing with alternative miniatures for a certain grimdark game of the far future, Warhammer 40,000, uh, then uh, you will be able to find all sorts of absolutely fantastic looking 3D printable elements as part of their collection. Uh, the Maker's Cult has been going for quite a while now. Uh, I believe they've done some stuff in the past working on things like um, one page rules and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff, which is pretty awesome. Uh, obviously, they did that really nice, sort of like quick and easy uh, alternative to 40K, which is very, very worth your time if you want to go and check it out. Totally free. 
which is cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, yes, if you're looking to build, as they've called it, the Valor Core, or for example, some fantastic regular old Imperial Guard armies, mm. then you've got some absolutely amazing uh, characters, infantry, vehicles, all sorts of different things. Yeah. That's part of their sort of Patreon. And then as you can see here over on CG like Trader as well. Oh, yes. There's some, I love it. It's proper old school looking. It's very cool. <laughs> Don't mess it almost, a li- almost looks a little bit like a flare gun. In many yeah, ways. Like no yeah. drum mag there. Single <laughs> shot grenade launcher. It's a flare. It is a flare, yeah. <laughs> you can't uh, get yeah. more illuminated than being on fire. Exactly, yeah. 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 Uh, but as you can see there, you know, you've got that sort of like classic sort of death core style mm-hmm. look to them, but then sort of mixing in lots of other bits and pieces at the same time as well. Um, so, you know, you could paint these in different colours and they'd work for all sorts of different regiments throughout the Grim Dark universe. Uh, you've got your standard sort of like weapon selections in there. So you've got your las guns or auto guns, however you want to yeah. uh, approach it. I prefer a las gun that you can, you can charge up over a fire. Um, yep. <laughs> you don't run out of bullets. <laughs> Through the pack in the fire, it will shorten the warranty on that. That's true. Yeah. The Emperor's warranty. <laughs> Your attack priest may cry a little bit. That is also yeah. true. Uh, but well, then unless also... you get blasting as you throw it in. That's true, yeah. yeah. You've also got uh, plasma guns, melter guns, flamers, and all sorts of pieces in there too. Uh, so you can kind of make a fully fledged squad uh, for use on the tabletop, which I think is really nice indeed. Uh, mm. But yeah, the, uh, as I say, Way more stuff beyond just mm. basic infantry uh, for us to have a look at here. Oh, yes. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if people just want to pick out some interesting things, oh. we'll go for it. Well, so. I'll, I'll start with ogres. Oh. So you two nice. can have your ab humans matching your standard rank and file. Very nice. Which is a funky way of doing things. Can I move us up so I can see the arrow? Well, I can they are them. menacing looking, aren't they? They really are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It looks like it's gone through one of those phone filters, like what the kids use. It does. It's Instagram ready. <laughs> uh, I love I that. You didn't go for the kawaii one. <laughs> no, I know. There's no bunny ears on these guys. <laughs> I really like those because they kind of got like that sort of riot look yeah. to them, like riot cop. So you could yes, use that. You could kind of like mix and match those with some sort of like arbite bits, mm. and you'd have some really big, burly sort of like bouncers for you to use in sort of um, some necromundry type things as well. Isn't like that the nice. the Bulgrins? Yes, added the to forty k yeah. with the the riot shields and yeah. and close combat weapons. Oh, imagine using those alongside the Palanites from Necromund. I love That'd the be. fact that they're pretty supported. Always good. Always good. No work needed in that case. Void <laughs> shot. Ooh. Oh. What a there. detailed back. That's oh. gorgeous. One step away from the Rocketeer there. That is true. Hmm? No, I don't think it's a jetpack. I'm pretty sure that's just the... Uh, Rebreather. Stuff. Rebreather, yeah. yeah. Uh, turn us. on it, though. The dials, the little pouches. Mm-hmm. Love it. Considering most of us spend, I'd say, 90% of the game looking at the back of our miniatures, it's good to have miniatures that have something nice on their mm-hmm. rear. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody and, else? And have nice it? rears. There we go. <laughs> the Bane Blade. Where's the Bane? It is the Bane Blade. Oh. It's up there on the top right. Top right, top right. Second this one. Oh, yeah. there we go. Oh, we'll also open those Sentinels as well. Those would be cool. Oh, Jerry. We'll, okay, those too. Well, we'll get them on the way back. Yes. Oh, man. Oh. It's a cathedral oh. on tracks. <laughs> I it's, love oh. that. It's much, much more Russian than mm. the standard oh, Bane yeah. Blade. Yeah. With its big curved terrace on us me likey that looks more i think what i'm seeing in comparison is these look a lot more menacing that coming mm-hmm. onto the tabletop is petrifying mm-hmm. although how many parts does it have to come in if you're running it out on a mm-hmm. resin printer uh, is there see a- how it breaks down <laughs> there we go oh yes Hi. yes 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 Justin's little 3D printing brain has come yes. to drive. Yeah. No, should we no, show should we show these to John? I think we probably should. It is a tank and he has a 3D printer, so yeah, I feel yeah. like we should. Oh, fabulous detail. The breakdown they've done on it makes perfect sense. I color me impressed. It's very similar to the breakdown of the original Forge World being played. <laughs> I, I had one of those. They may have used it as the uh, yeah. inspiration, I think. But, uh, Possibly. 
That's going to turn out quite heavy, though, isn't it? I would imagine um, so. Uh, it looks like it's got quite a few hollow components. Mm. So the weight should be kept down with that. And because they've already like pre-supported it uh, in the previous image we saw, mm. yeah, you can really see how much there is that's empty space inside it. Just pack a bunch of lead uh, underneath it to, to weigh it, to make it feel hefty. Yeah. That's the way to go. Yeah. It's cast it solid. <laughs> None of this. <laughs> cast it solid. solid <laughs> make it an actual weapon then, yeah, as opposed yeah, to yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> Well, if you lose your game, you can your opponent's head. Yeah. A tank on the end of a hammer Ooh. sounds very warm at 40,000 to me. So yeah. It does, yeah. They're yeah. oh, amazing. Yeah. They are very skinny looking. They kind of remind me a little bit. Yeah, a little bit Star Wars, a little bit dust as well, I'd say, which is interesting. But uh, yeah, very nice. Yeah. Although I'm not sure how they've got away with using those exact legs because those are pretty much the exact same legs as the regular Sentinel. I would bet that there is one or two things that are different. <laughs> that, There's that one less skull on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that you've got like yeah. four relics like, instead of six. Yeah. I like that you've got both covered and uncovered variants of it as well. Mm. So you can kind of do ones that kind of get dropped into sort of toxic environments and then you can have these ones that are maybe used as scouts and stuff, mm. which is quite nice. Just, the more I look at ones are just better. The more I look, the more weapons I see. <laughs> I just originally I just saw the missiles and I was like, oh wait, no, there's more. Well, if when you go up against the innumerable hordes of orcs and tyranids out there in the galaxy, you need as many weapons as possible, mm. really. So yeah. Very nice looking stuff. Beautiful. Funky stuff. Mm. You want to get bogged down in Imperial? Do we have well, non-Imperial people or are they only Imperial? Let's push on. Oh, that's big. Let's have a look at that anyway. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I love that little creepy crawly Water. walker as well. Oh, oh that's nice. Scuttlebug that's thing. Scuttlebug. Yeah. yeah. And as I say, there are five pages of this. Yep. So <laughs> there's a oh, fair yeah. bit. To fear not, there are indeed bug like things as well oh. to be attacked. And flyers. Oh, that's nice. That's cool. I like the windows as the eyes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's that's neat. neat. Yeah. Interior that's detailing. really brilliant. It's rocket powered. Look at the back end. It's got jet engines. Nice. Sir, we can't get up the hill. Fire the jets. <laughs> <laughs> Load up the chamber. That's nice. I like that as a sort of alternative um, mechanicus piece. That'd be cool. Sir, it's also very nice. Yeah. I imagine that he's literally built into the turret space. And that's where he lives. <laughs> He's not allowed to come out. Yeah. I also like that you could, a lot of this stuff you're seeing here, you could easily chaosify, which is quite nice. So imagine that bug, but then you sort of bolt on some sort of bionic, well, not bio, uh, biological bits to it mm. here and there, and then look at make it look as if like a demon has grown from yeah. within it and sort of like he's now encased within the armor. That could be really cool. That's so the other cool thing you do is you could turn this into terrain pieces very easily. True. So print out mm. certain components, and because it's already in bits, you can do it like a blown up one. Yeah, yeah. Use them as markers and terrain. Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd Beautiful. Be cool. Imperial Katusha. Dude. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, I imagine, a Torox. Variant. Yeah, their variant of that. But, yeah. but with wheels, mm -hmm. like nature yeah. intended. <laughs> yes, instead of weird track unit things. Those are so odd. <laughs> Although the, the front of this vehicle, it's kind of got duck face. <laughs> it has a bit. I now can't unsee that, Justin. Thank no. You. You're welcome. You're welcome to everyone on the internet. <laughs> Just bits. Terrible bits. Oh, look at the bits no more. Alien. Ooh. Alien doggos. Fire. Oh, we've got some flyers there. Yeah. What else is there? More alien things. Send you on form. page three. Well, like easy no more. Oh wow! That oh, that's unusual. cool. Quadruped using its front two arm. Then very mm. cool. So they've taken the idea of like a hormigold, mm. and it's either like the 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 shell skeleton of one that's then been turned into a weapon by the Imperium, or yeah, something else has got their hands on it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a mechanicus tech priest biologist yeah. out there that's just went, <laughs> I can make you better. Yeah, it's been yeah. modded. There's smiley faces. 
Yeah, running yeah. from planet to planet away from the Inquisitor hunting him down. <laughs> yeah, just leaving a brit of these behind here and there. Those faces on the ones before reminded me of the mechanical dog from uh, Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> the one on the left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. He does look very happy, doesn't he, the one on the left? It's like his first day on the job. Mm-hmm. Bless him. I call you Chomper. Things haven't gone wrong for him yet. Not yet. Look, it's a hug a Ripley day. Ah, this is a really cool idea. I love the idea of them of like a as you, as you were saying, Jer- uh, Justin, uh, like a tech priest experimenting and messing around with the bodies of tyranids and stuff. Yeah, I I like that with all if you them as a whole. I like how none of their limbs match, and I, I think mm. when you're obviously putting the sprue together, you don't have to be exactly careful to what yeah, arms you yeah. put where. It's like um. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, but it's just grabbed the dead nids, bolted some bits on it, and then, you know, 10,000 volts up the jaxi. You could do some good kit bashing with this. That's it's cool. 10,000 volts up the jaxi. Yeah. That is cool. <laughs> you your album from Blur. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The kids still listen to Blur. It's a popular band of the youth of today, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> Is it? They are. Yeah. The they are surreal. Mm. Very but, Blanchian as well. Yeah. Uh, How would you like base them? Relic on the wings. How'd you go around basing those? Mm. Uh, you'd either I I'd either do them low on the ground, so it looks like their tendrils are like trailing through, and then yeah. make it use some of those like tendrils as anchor points. Ah, uh, yeah. Or as they've done there, do or that there. kind of like built into the jetpack, sort of like. That stream cool. of um, 10,000 volts up the Jackson. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> one. I think we do the title of this week's show. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hashtag OTT Weekender. <laughs> um, Fascinating. Yeah. Wow. What's on page three? Mm. Oh, let's go to tree. There's a French foreign legionary looking fellow. Yes, with his kepi. Uh, if you don't want to go and join the penal legion, you can get added into the. <laughs> did I just see Boba Fett? You did. Huh? Yes. I, there's also an upgrade set for the Chimera. This. Oh yeah, yeah. there is. Sure, yeah. You just bought that onto an existing kit. That's cool. Possibly, we'll have a look. Oh, that's uh, cool. Uh, that's Boba Fett. Oh, Hunt towards. Look, part Boba, part Django. Mm-hmm. He's got his gun and dad's pistol. We'll say didn't protect dad particularly well, not even having a pair of them. Patty Bojango. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect, man. I was sitting there in my head thinking, you know, trying to combine them together and you come up with Bojango <laughs> and it's 10 times better than everything I could have come up with. Bravo, Ben. <laughs> I spent a week off thinking of puns. That's nice little trio. <laughs> Time well spent. <laughs> yeah. They're beautiful. I like them. I love the middle one. Middle one's my favourite. Ronnie yeah. Rocket Pants and get around the mm. place. Like Ronnie Rocket Pants. Uh, mm. Really nice stuff in it. Yeah. It, it, it's one of those ones where you keep finding bits and pieces that you're like, oh, that would be nice to print. Oh, that would be nice to print. Mm. And because they've done such a really nice variety of different things, you could probably get away with making an entire army basically. Oh, that's the hell what they have. So, yeah. Yeah. That's what that is. Part of being home. Uh, yeah, it's their upgrade for their own kit. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. In case you two require more flammable or chemical, we have. Man, I really oh, like tank these. Riders. Yeah. They do tank riders. Where up tank one. riders? Up, up. There, down. Uh, bottom row, fourth end. <laughs> down from that one a wee bit. There. There we go. <laughs> oh. That's neat. You like it? That is nice. You too can put all your eggs in one basket. Everything is so white. <laughs> it is actually. Hey, <laughs> contrast. Holy shit balls. Thank you for whoever thought this was a good idea because quite frankly, I was getting snow blindness looking at that one. <laughs> Where do they start and finish? That's brilliant. That's better. I appreciate yeah. this. <laughs> the you one on the last move. one, you could have put them at any round table, mm. but this this makes perfect. Mm. Oh, that's great. And more mecha mechanicals. Yeah, some kind of mechanical hell beast. 
It's like metal based. Your bio one board of the best films can. you will ever see that I think four people have seen. <laughs> if you've hey. seen metal based, you two can comment which your no. favorite character was below. That's I like that in the towel where the kind of you can see the skin kind of coming off. And it looks yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, that's really nice. Filled with piping. Hmm. That's a big bucket on the end of that, isn't it? That is. Oh yeah. Very cool. Very nice. My favorite of all, though. <laughs> oh yes. Yes. All of my yes. You, yes. you can take to the skies with your Delorkian. That's exactly what the orcs would love to make. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. Marty. Where they're going, they don't need roads. I've got to go I'm back. Say where they're going, they don't need Gretchen. <laughs> We've got to go back. Too far to the future. <laughs> That's cool incredible. Body. I would say... Because the DeLorean was brushed steel finish and very susceptible to rust, I wouldn't have made it look shiny in any way, shape, or form. I would have just rusted it from one side to the other because orcs are yeah. not going to keep that clean. <laughs> then do reverse weathering where all the edges get shiny highlights where they've just crashed yeah. into things and stripped the rust away back to the bare metal. I love even the feature of the fire coming up back. That's yeah. nice. It's a nice touch. What a cool little kit. Nice and oh, inventive. Yeah. Love the Gretchen hanging out the side on the gun. <laughs> <laughs> Such a nice little touch. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's, no, that's how you use oh, a he's, flux he's capacitor. He's wearing a puffer vest. <laughs> yeah. That's how you're supposed to use it. Go on. Oh, Marty, cool. load the flux capacitor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, can, you can have it on its wheels on the ground if you want. You don't have to be yeah. flying. I would be very disappointed if I saw this out on the table. One person didn't at least say "Great Scott" once. Mm. It's just <laughs> imagine, imagine if you drop that into because I imagine st some people still have the rules for speed freaks or Gorka Oh yeah, mm. uh, so you could play around with dropping that into a game of if it was yeah. modern speed freaks or that terrain there, Jerry. Use it as your buggy. Or just use it as a buggy. Yep. Yeah, true. Nice. Seems to be, yeah. Which is this one. Oh, wow. A whole bundle of Imperial-esque terrain things. Wow. There's a bit of everything there. Mm. Something for the old world. That would also oh, work really yeah, nicely yeah. in Age of Sigmar as well, actually. Mm. You could use that as one of the new cities that they set up in Gur or something. That'd be cool. And because it's an FDL file, you can print out as much of it as you want to make it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. That's cool. I like I that. Like it. That's cool. Cathedrally. Full of buttresses. <laughs> All the buttresses <laughs> flying and otherwise. Do you like a good buttress? All sorts of cover to argue about with your friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could see his leg. <laughs> last page. What weird and wacky things have we got here? Ooh. Ooh. These guys are weird. Ooh. Oh, a flyer. I like that. And one thing I will say, every last SDL file here is kind of cheap as chips. They have been. I've Pretty noticed much. that as well. Yeah, this, this is what I'd say. You're undervaluing yourself a little bit. Ooh. Alternative space nights. That's nice. You heard it here first. Get in before he raises his price to GW prices <laughs> based on what Justin has said. <laughs> I, I love supporting small art, and sometimes you do find some of them, they do not charge enough for what they're doing. These are really incredible, aren't they? They've got a mixed bag of everything in this shop. Mm. Yep, pretty much. So that's a bolt on to one of the existing Games Workshop kits, that one. So you can add different. Nice fly components to it, so yeah, you can make the storm toaster look nice. <laughs> mm. Hovery things, very cool. I can like make hovery things. Hey, my circus. Oh, Justin lives. <laughs> oh, yeah, hello, we've Justin. Had, we've had yeah. a Jerry and a Justin today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> 
It's all right. I was in that video from XLBS and the dogs the other day. It's no problem. Uh, yeah, I would never have the patience to braid my beard. Maybe ah. this will do it for you for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> if I had the patience to let it grow that long. Oh, I like the arm. The arm this doesn't necessarily stand out until you see it, the mechanical arm. Yeah. It looks almost like kind of naturally fantasy type head. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting kind of... seeing these because these are presumably the earliest. I would imagine mm. so, yeah. yeah. You see progression over time. Because that's that's more, say, chunky and less detailed. Softer details. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But interesting, nevertheless. Yeah. For Fascinating sure. stuff in there. Mm-hmm. He also has a Patreon. Yep. Uh, so as well as the CG trader elements that you can see there, we can go and get all your different bits and bobs. You also have the Patreon, as you can see there, which shows us some of the new stuff that's been working on recently. Uh, there's a lot of kind of like classic thunder warrior style stuff that's been worked on which is pretty nice. cool uh you obviously got more imperials and all sorts of different things there too but obviously there you go there's some thunder warrior-esque um, mm. space marines so if you wanted to do um uh, marines as they were before they were all wiped out by the new boys uh that have then been replaced by new new boys uh then you've got some really cool stuff there to play around with uh, mm. have fun with so yeah sweet Sweet to the beat. There you have it. If you're interested in taking a look at some alternative 40k bits and pieces, the Maker's Cult have got you covered. But we're going to round out the show with a couple of Kickstarters. Mm -hmm. And where are we going to begin, Ben? So we are starting uh, things off with uh, the creators of the miniature Wargaming the movie uh, have returned to Kickstarter with a new uh, crowdfunding effort, uh, which is to bring the Wargaming stories to life uh, on your screens, Mm. be they PC or otherwise. Uh, So this is a new campaign that is going to be aiming to create a a multi-episode web series Uh, from Joe Piddington, as you see there, uh, where they will be talking to some of the biggest names within the industry, namely people like Ronnie Renton, you've got uh, Rick Priestley, you've got Alessio Cavatori, you've got the Perrys, uh, as well as um, plenty of media sites as well. Uh, So they're also talking to Mini Wargaming, Wall of Games, Mantic Games, and us on Tabletop also showed off in there too, which is pretty cool. Um, so each of the episodes are going to break down to re- be around sort of 60 to 150 minutes. So, you know, these are not like 20 minute one and dones. These are big, lengthy documentary style episodes for you to dive into and have fun with um, where they've really, really gone behind the scenes in order to try and like bring um, sort of like stuff to the fore that maybe you'd be fascinated to know as like a nerd within our industry, uh, but have always been sort of like, I wonder what. Uh, well, hopefully this series will kind of answer that, which is pretty cool. Um, I, I know uh, Jerry has already expressed his enjoyment over the fact that they're going to be doing some more stuff with Rick Priestley because mm. uh, he did a little bit of a teaser at the end of the movie, uh, and it would be great to hear a little bit more about that. Um, but uh, but yes. Um, as well as the uh, eight confirmed episodes, they're also working on a couple more for season one, hopefully, if they, if they get the, the funding through, uh, alongside some additional stuff that can, will come through stretch goals and obviously into season two and, and more as they, as they go on. Um, most of the filming has been done, although a lot more of this work is still yet to be filmed. Uh, we'll be carrying on through until I think it's March 2022. So they uh, obviously need all the backing in order to make sure that they can you know, take the amazing camera equipment and all that kind of things to these locations in order to film stuff and also to do all the editing and things as well because as we very well know here at on tabletop editing editing does take time especially if you're trying to make it look good um so yes that is where all the funding goes for this particular one mm-hmm. you can also get bits and pieces in addition to just the episodes um so the way that you can pledge for things as you can kind of pledge for episodes that you want uh, or you can pledge for everything as a whole if you want, if, if you would prefer. Uh, but you can also get some additional add-ons, uh, like they've done sort of like a brush series and some accessories and all kinds of things there as well too. So there are lots of different ways for you to get involved and uh, sort of like uh, make your support known for the wargaming storage on Kickstarter. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's a fascinating dive into some, I suppose unexplored avenues within the industry um especially with the amount of people he's talked to in the past uh i have the miniature wargaming uh movie and it was it was really interesting to see him talking to various 
people about the the hobby in general going from people just going across to Norway to take part in a tournament uh, to people setting up their own terrain business and going to salute to the big names of the industry. It sort of covered everything. Uh, and there was an awful lot of stuff that obviously had to be cut for time. Um, so the fact that he's able to go back and sort of expand on that and explore it uh, will be fascinating. So hopefully it, it gets through the funding and, and actually gets around to um, seeing publication because I think he has um, Miniature Wargame the movie has a deal with Amazon currently US I don't know if it's expanded into the UK so having a documentary about Miniature Wargaming on a platform like Amazon is fairly big um, yeah. and I expect if this, this goes through that they'll look for something similar with these as well to try and get it out to as many people as possible um, having gone through the journey once with him, you don't really realize just how much is required until yes, they're yeah. going, I need to find somebody to do color correction and then um, subtitling as well. So okay. everything was subtitled into multiple languages for the Blu-ray uh, and well, digital as well, but who watches digital? Um, so I expect this is going to be something similar. So the language barrier will not be there if you want to listen to it in your own language or, um, or well, subtitles, read it in your own language, I suppose. Uh, it should be accessible to everyone. And also the fact that it's like a film, every episode is a chunky piece. I think a lot of people <laughs> have seen so, it and, yeah. said, and looked at it and went, oh, that's a lot for eight episodes or whatever it was. It's because I, had, I had this conversation with somebody in, on the Discord, and I went, you realize they're not 30-minute episodes. These are one to two, two-and-a-half-hour episodes. I was like, mm. oh, I, I'll have to go back and have a look. And went, yeah. Yeah, full feature-length pieces. It's essentially, yeah. it's, it's, he's done, done one feature-length film documentary already. Now he's looking to do multiple in that genre. Yeah. And some of them are sort of combined where it's going to be sort of, I assume OTT and mini wargaming will be sort of, slammed together in a uh digital a media four part, <laughs> format one whereas you've got then like the perrys are going to be separate and then henry yeah. hyde henry hyde's done some magnificent work in the industry so yeah. i do love to hear what he's saying i, think, I, I love think, that go on ben. Yeah. I, think, I think that's uh, i think that's really the the key thing about this is that this very much feels and they do mention that in the kickstarter page this has been made for people who are like i love wargaming mm. I would love to hear Rick Priestley talk more about X or something. This has been designed for that. Uh, and I think it would be fantastic to see it actually come to fruition. Yeah. Um, they've also said they're going to be doing like their own web platform, I think, for this as well. So you can watch it all. So they're trying to make it so that it'll have it. If you want to watch it all digitally rather than getting like discs and all that kind of thing, yeah. you'll be able to watch it all because obviously it is a web series. You'll be able to go and watch them all online and, and have fun with that. Um, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> it's not Warhammer Plus. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but they also said that they want to do something where they make it so it's not just a place for you to watch the videos, but also a place for you to talk with people mm. as well. So they want That's to build nice. in sort of uh, community elements to it so that, that if you are watching something, you can then go off away from that and be like, oh, I've watched this thing about Rick Pleasy, blah, blah, blah. What did you think about X or Y in the documentary and that kind of thing? So I really, really like that uh, that element of things. As I say, properly made for nerds, I think. Yeah. I love, what I love about this is the different perspectives from different areas of the industry, all kind of coming together to one place to teach the viewers of exactly what the industry yeah. is like. And yeah. it's it's insights that viewers wouldn't necessarily get. And it's, it's really cool to have all the different perspectives from all the different angles i really like that. i just want to hear what the end times would have been like if gw hadn't <laughs> shafted rick Priestley. <laughs> there's legitimately what's going to happen in that episode so yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or jerry's just gonna be there the next time we see rick at a show with a shiv going you're coming with me for 20 minutes mm. <laughs> the, the biggest problem with that is i'll know that i'll never be able to get the other three books I just yeah. have that one sitting there by itself, <laughs> and I'll know how the story should have ended, but I won't be able to actually engage with it in any way. Uh, Jerry, Tama can't find out how it ended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, deep cut for the kids at home there. Anyway, there oh, that are, was a nerdy joke. Jesus there Christ. are twenty days left uh, yeah. for wargaming stories from Ocean View Studios. Definitely go and have a look. Uh, like I say, it may be that you're only interested in one 
in which case you can pledge for you just the pledge one, for but that. it yeah. will help sort of push everything through because uh, they'll need to get the the editors, all the digital effects, bits and bobs. And if memory serves, I think they got a composer in to actually do all the music for miniature Amazing. war gaming as well. So it wasn't just yeah. not just buying stuff off the shelf, and that's that's where the the money is going towards to actually make them proper, visually correct documentaries and not just something that uh, has been filmed by somebody on his iPhone. So all the best to you for that. I hope yeah, it comes through. So. Mm-hmm. Our but, last Kickstarter is Colony 87, Ben. Yes. So uh, Crooked Dice Game Design Studio, what a mouthful of a name that they now have, <laughs> <laughs> uh, are now on Kickstarter with, as you're saying, Colony 87. But this is wave four of their releases. Uh, so as you might imagine, there have been three before this although none are quite as mighty. Uh, but this is the 28 millimeter Sci-Fi Civilians Kickstarter, which is going to be working to create four new sets of miniatures for you to use in your games of, for example, 7TV, or perhaps a little game called Stargrave that's mm. been floating around at the moment. That'd be that good as well, maybe, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you ever wanted to populate your boards with a whole bunch of sort of NPCs and stuff, you now have the ability to do so. Um, the latest campaign looks to include miniatures from four different sets. So you're going to have nobles, outlanders, oh. salvagers, and the market folk. Uh, but in addition to all of that as well, you're also going to be looking at new stuff, uh, sorry, existing stuff from uh, their expansive range over those last three waves, of course, too, which is very nice indeed. Um, so yes, uh, a lot of the work comes from the illustrator Will Beck, although there's other um, artists involved as well. And they've also got sculptors on board. So you've got Andrew May and James Sheriff, who've worked on the latest stuff. Although I believe there are, I think, three or four um, additional sculptors, perhaps, mm-hmm. who've worked on the existing stuff previous to this. Um, so a whole bunch of people have put their talents to um, sort of... Um, to the uh, the grindstone for this one and uh it's a really awesome looking set of very characterful miniatures uh that i think would be able to take you off on all sorts of different adventures uh when it comes to your sci-fi gaming on the tabletop so. they're fantastic those nobles yes. i mean I, I i it looks like they were heading to the renaissance fair and took a wrong turn now they're at space camp it's just like well we're here maybe they were going oh, to a I space renaissance that. fair <laughs> <laughs> maybe I just, uh, I, I just see an alien race trying to um, duplicate what they do in humanity and what they've seen yeah. on the kind of human channels to say, yeah, we dress like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's entirely possible people have got to the future went, you know what, we were wrong to ditch the tights. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, is that a that's a joke? That, that is a joke. I was thinking that was a chocobo. It's it's an evil chocobo. Yeah. yeah. So, so these awesome. Outlanders were previewed, I think it was a couple of months ago now, mm. actually. Uh, but they look, they are amazing. I love those because you could use them as kind of like mercenaries or bounty hunters, perhaps, as mm. well, that are sort of headed out into the waste to hunt people down. And they're like the only brave people that will do it. I think that'd be really cool. Uh, it's kind of like an angle yeah. to go on, but, uh, but yeah. And fear the alien emus. Exactly. Yeah. The salvages are also great. They're they're particularly good if you're trying to make like a crew, I think, because you've got that kind of aesthetic going on with the the sort of like their suits and that kind of things. Oh, and then obviously you've got the robot robot companions as well. So. They're more adorable. Sci-fi as well, oh, rather than yes. it's you know if the nobles are something from Star Trek, then these are more sort of Blake Seven. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh my God! One you've just heard. Rem- You've just reminded me that you could all use all of these for a holodeck scenario in 7TV. <laughs> so you could have some of their like proper sci-fi characters walking into the holodeck in a 7TV scenario and trying to solve it before data gets corrupted or something. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. What is that- with the guy in the red in a go-kart? He looks like he's a member of the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> so I presume these are Halloween yeah. miniatures, yes? Given the time of the year, they look I mean, like they're trick or treat. They do work. <laughs> yes, yeah, very true. Yeah. It's, it's this robot butler-looking fellow with his purple bowler hat on. I love I him. like that. <laughs> very it's cool. just so absurdly quirky. That's the thing that I like about this stuff. Yeah. That's the main thing. Nobody says you have to be straight-laced, especially with Seven TV, mm. where so much of it is based around. TV shows. TV shows and TV shows from the 70s and 80s, or even the 60s in some cases. So 
having you know raided the BBC's costume department and then added some pipes on top <laughs> of and a bin liner. <laughs> yeah, and bam, they are now all of a sudden they are on a new I world for Doctor Who. Uh, or they're in the future, which makes perfect sense and perfect sense for the the style they've taken, but not so far fetched that they wouldn't work in hard sci fi as well. You know, you could have them in your star graves and your um, scrappers, five parsecs, whatever it happens to be. If you don't play seven TV, these are certainly distinctive enough to do the job for that, any of them. That second one in up there, I'm convinced, is Space Freddie Mercury. Um, <laughs> tell me I'm lying. Yeah. Could be. <laughs> I think the Tash is big I, enough to be Lemmy, though. <laughs> yeah, true. I find it really weird looking back at someone like the old TV shows and old movies and how they imagined the world would be even today. Yeah. And it's just like, no, oh, it didn't change much. You know, we just we, we got smartphones and yeah, that's about as close as we got. Where are our flying cars down? Yes. That's what I say. I'm disappointed that nothing just beeps. I've just presumed by watching Star Trek as a kid that you'd open the doors and everything and go beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing no beeps in the future. No hoverboards, no, no beeping. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting variations on um, stretch goals as well. So you go from miniatures to sort of artifacts, objectives, scenery dressing. That sort of thing. Yeah. 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 One of the things they said about the stretch goals, they wanted to try and keep it quite tight. So that's why a lot, a lot of the goals are very close to each other because they were like, right, we want to try and get to get you all of these as quickly as possible. That's uh, fine. And obviously, you know, Crooked Dice have been doing these Kickstarters for a really long time now. Mm-hmm. Um, so then you know that they can deliver on what they, they produce. And pretty much all of this stuff will end up um, actually on their web store eventually. Oh, yeah. Uh, like their, all of their Colony 87 stuff. Um, that you can see things like the add-on section stuff is very is, is all available for you to go and pick up there if you want to, or you can obviously help with the Kickstarter and get it that way. So, yeah. so. no, no men tap by his red stained lips. Who do DeVries? I like the street punks. They're a very cool little set. Mm. Mm. So you go, how to include add-ons? I don't care. No. We know how to include them. Here we go. Oh, oh these are some of the previous. Uh-huh. Yep. So yeah. If you've missed out on previous Kickstarters, you can pick them up with this. And obviously the pledge, even though you may be pledging for older stuff, still goes towards unlocking stretch goals in amongst the new bits and pieces. So it's a, a great way of doing it. Uh, if you want to get your hands on some unusual alien pets. Yeah, the alien pets range is yes, great. Yes, I yeah. do. <laughs> you want them all? I want them all. Look, there's a they pile like of a what looks like porgs. Badger bear oh. thing. Now's the time to just go out there with a hammer and start killing alien pets. <laughs> All of these are deadly. They will destroy your crops. That's why they're bright your... coloured. They? Yeah. Are they are they coming right for you, Jerry? Very much so. They are coming right for me. Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, there we have what? it. Two Fabulous. terrific Kickstarters to round yeah. out the show. <laughs> and well worth having a look at either slash both of them if you're interested in documentaries or in replaying 70s sci-fi tv shows uh, mm-hmm. with colony 87 there is 18 days left on the colony uh, so get in fill your boots we are going to move on and we will reappear on sunday morning for our xlbs show which is free to cult of game members if you're not already a cult of game member shame on you Come across to OnTabletop.com, sign up for a 30-day trial, and you can see what we get up to behind closed doors. <laughs> the answer may surprise you. It won't, won't surprise you. It's more of this, but with more swears. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be in with a chance to win that Black Templar <laughs> army from store.ontabletop.com, don't forget to be a subscriber and drop a comment below. Otherwise, we will see you again here next week for <laughs> some more of the same. Until then, bye-bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.